So, <laughs> we're working on this Suzuki GSX-R1100. Yep. Oh, is that a... A thousand or it's a, it's a thousand cc's. A thousand cc. This thing was really nice. 2019 hadn't even come out yet. This is built for Nolan Ryan, right? <laughs> yes. Roger, I'm sorry. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, we're starting a daily for it's Friday. The Friday daily. The Fry daily. Fry daily. Yeah, we're doing a Fry daily. All right, I'll leave you alone. You don't need me today. Okay. All right. What else are we gonna talk about? We're gonna talk to Stefan about anodizing. What? Whoa, that's gonna be nerdy. Mm -hmm. All right, good. All this one's gonna be a good one. Because they gonna, never I'm are. I'm gonna go watch YouTube. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I've got you. Uh, what, Alan? What is that? Okay, cool. What do I say? Uh, yeah, well, as we've talked about, today is Friday and it is another Revival Daily. I am the host today, Alec. And that's it. Okay, uh, today we're gonna talk to Stefan. We're gonna do a few things today. We're gonna talk to Stefan. We got a lot of cool stuff going on in the shop. I mean, in my opinion, because I really like working here, we always got a lot of cool stuff going on in the shop. But uh, this week is an especially exciting time because we are going to start doing something that we haven't done before. Before I completely give it away, even though we might have talked about it briefly, let's go talk to him. We'll get back to this. This, this bike's got a lot of history. We'll get back to it uh, in a little bit. And uh, a lot of good stuff about that bike. Have we, have we shown Stefan's little guy? Look at this thing. Anyways. I like it. I like little bikes. Woo! It's still hot outside. Hey! What's up, dude? What's up? Not too much. Uh, just making some fork tube extensions for the Urban GS. Oh, yeah. Uh, we wanted to make that bike a little bit taller, and so we're going to make a 70 millimeter fork extension so we can drop the fork and get more height in the bike. Yep. Uh, yeah, the guy, I think we touched on this bike in a previous episode, oh, yeah. but he's a really tall guy. We built him Pyro, All right. and if you've ever sat, well, you never have, but <laughs> sitting on that bike yeah. and riding it is a stretch because he is such a tall, big-footed guy. Yeah. And so this is his bike as well. Right. Got to modify. Um, anyway, it's kind of a good opportunity to go through sort of how this stuff happens and how it works. Yeah. So this is a CNC lathe, and uh, the way that we make it go, it starts on a computer, so first I modeled this part, I had to measure a bunch of stuff, and um, this surface right here that I just turned blue, that's going to be an out external thread so it can thread into the existing fork. Uh, that little piece right there, that's an O-ring seal so that all the oil stays in there. And then on this other side, we've got, again, internal threads, which I'm super nervous about doing because that's a great opportunity to crash the machine and screw a bunch of stuff yeah. up. Um, and then also, of course, you got to have the little land for another O-ring seal so that, again, oil hole stays in there. So, model this up, lots of measuring, and then uh, we set up uh, tool paths, which is how we actually know what is going to happen. So, if you look at this, all these little blue lines indicate what this cutter is going to do, and in order to make sure it works, we can simulate it, so that turns into a green chunk of aluminum, and then we can play this uh, play this like a video and see what's going to happen next. So this thing goes through, makes a bunch of cuts, and then uh, there is a secondary operation with a grooving tool, but that's how this goes. Once that's done, uh, we feel good about the whole thing, we can post-process it, and this is where it turns that um, proprietary software toolpath into G-code, so it has to know how to translate yeah. this language into this into language. language. So it's really easy, you just hit a button, it saves a file. See how easy that was? <laughs> yeah. You hit a button, saves a file, and then we grab our handy dandy USB stick and save the file on this. Come on. So we save this file. And then eject the stick, load it on. The reason we're using a USB is because this machine's so old, it doesn't have internet, doesn't have uh, any yeah. USB type connections. So we actually are running a USB emulator. This is a three and a half inch floppy drive, and it turns the signal from the USB stick into what you would get from a three and a half inch floppy drive. 
and for anybody born after what 1985 <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what no that idea is. yeah and uh, fortunately we're that old uh, but also you might you might want to mention that this actually is retrofitted because this machine right. did not come Absolutely. with any of this right. stuff what year is this machine uh, best guess is uh, early 70s and this would have been a manual machine with all the cranks and wheels and yeah um, some other place uh, reader products did the conversion and they made all this stuff and turned it into a CNC, put the servos on it and all that jazz. Yeah. And we still use it manually, but right. not for, I mean, stuff like this, that's a whole... Right, I we mean, can still move it around and jog it manually just using using the hand wheel so we can drive it like a manual lathe. Yeah. But it's also really nice to be able to just program it and say, all right, do your job. And hopefully I didn't screw anything up. <laughs> Watch out for that oil, it doesn't smell very good. No, the coolant always gets uh, like bacteria that grows in it, and so you kind of don't really want that on you. Yeah. Uh, if you want to get on this side of the, of the mess, you can get a better view of what's, what's going yeah. down. Yeah, I'll switch you. I'll get, in the, I'll get in the funk. So now this is actually doing the passes the same as what we saw in the simulation. What else? Yeah. How long is this now? How long is this gonna take? That that whole uh, that whole pass is probably gonna take about two minutes. Okay. To actually run. Hey, perfect. Always, there we go. You can always time lapse the shit out of this. Yeah, that's why. I mean, the rate of cut. We actually could go much faster because this is aluminum. I just didn't feel like shifting into high gear. Um, it's really not a big deal, but it's also not gonna take that long. Yeah, and don't forget your safety glasses. Right. I've got mine on. You, you got your safety contacts <laughs> on, right? Yeah, exactly. No, it's cool, man. I'll just close my eyes. Right. Um, anyway, let's see. What else do we know? Well, can you leave this alone for now? Um, I, I can leave this alone. Uh, there is a tool change that's going to come up, and we can... But what I want to talk about... Oh, right. That. Yeah, I want to okay. talk about the good stuff. All right. Do you have time? Yeah. Yeah, we can go do that. Let's go do that. So... Let's let's surprise them. All right, be good. Don't Look, screw up. This thing's doing its thing. That thing's doing its thing. Yeah. Robots, yeah. man. Dude, you got to get the robots to do your work. <laughs> Hi. Right. Hey, everybody. It's Josh Gage. So what we are going to talk about today? Sorry. Let's let Stefan get through. Is we we started doing something pretty exciting here. I mean, exciting for us. Um, but we started anodizing our own parts, and that's. Come on through, Alan. Sure, bro. Uh, yeah, we started anodizing our own stuff, and uh, we made a table, we made an anodizing station for it. We've been working on this thing, well, physically for about a week. We just finished it the day before yesterday. Stefan anodized some stuff yesterday. Yeah. And it's it's looking pretty good. Let's anodize this cookie. There. You can even plug it in and let the lights come on and oh yeah, all that stuff. Yes, this is slightly ghetto, but, um, <laughs> but it works. The, the theory and the science behind it is pretty solid, even if our execution is uh, rather shade tree. Yeah, I mean, come on. We, we didn't want to invest a ton of time and effort in this because we weren't sure if it was going to work and we weren't sure if it was something that was going to be good for us. So yeah. we kind of, we did a halfway version where, um, yeah, this, this is, is kind of set up right, but also set up kind of janky yeah yeah I mean you know it, it works right uh, anyway so what anodizing does this is uh, what a part looks like when it first comes off the machine and then through a series of all these chemi chemicals and different stuff we can apply a aluminum oxide coating which actually grows out of the aluminum um, with an electro like electrolysis process it actually grows like a thin honeycomb aluminum oxide layer that you can barely see. It's like one thousandth of an inch thick. And then you're able to dye that various colors. So when you see all the crazy colored anno stuff, the reds and the blues. You guys have seen it. Right. Everything in the world. Yeah, that's just a dye. And so the way that this whole thing goes is we start with the, um, the degreaser. And this degreaser is used after the parts have already been degreased quite a bit. And in this tank, all we're really doing is we've got a temperature measurement and we've got a small heater and that will bring this 
this bath up to uh, 57 degrees Celsius. And then there's also just a small circulation pump to keep everything moving. Uh, next up, after we spend a few minutes in this tank, then we're into the, um, the Deox tank. And this one is similar, but different color. And this one gets heated to 30 Celsius. Now let's, 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 I think you and I have talked about this briefly, I think, but just cause so they'll know, but. So once you pull it out of the degreaser, is there, do you have to clean it off, dry it off completely? Is there a, like a lag time or is there a time um, you shouldn't wait to go to these, like the next pro, the next steps? You do want to kind of execute all of these pretty much just bang, bang, bang. You don't want to like, I'll do this today and then come yeah, back yeah. and do this tomorrow. Uh, you bring up a good point and that is the rinse between stations. Yep. Um, that is a really important step and our apparatus hasn't accounted for it as well as we maybe should or could. Um, so for right now, all I'm doing is just taking the rack of parts out and dunking it in a bucket of uh, deionized water yep. and then kind of shake it off a little bit. The little bit of water that's hanging on won't mess up the chemistry, but at least I know it's clean. All right, next station, rinse in the DI Same water, thing. keep going. Um, and I know like, you know, the more we do this, the better we'll, the better we'll become equipped for it right. and all that stuff. Like, you know, like you said, I, it may be a ghetto version or whatever you say, but it's it's a really good version. It's a really good table. It does what it's supposed to do. And also this is kind of an experiment. Right. Like oh. this isn't like, we're gonna make a real deal, like no, no spare no expense right. anodizing station. That, that wasn't the case. It was kind of like, well, let's build one, see how it works, see if it works, see what we need to tweak. And then from there it'll grow and get, right. and get more um, user, you know, well, that's the word yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah, more professional, more, more user fresh, more user friendly. Um, there's a lot of places that have like fully automated tanks where they've got robots that set the timing and yeah, do yeah, everything. Of but we're able to get pretty close to professional results. Um, no, that thing this, looks great. Yeah, it's hard. It may not show through on the video, but this came out really, really well. Um, extremely happy with it. We're going to send these off for testing for UV to make sure that the colors don't fade. Yep. Um, all colors do fade. It just we want them to fade at the right rate. Yeah, yeah. How long? You know. Yeah. We've all seen them. We've all seen those bikes here with the faded, faded. Oh anodizing. man, it looks terrible too. Yeah. So we don't want to do that. After we get all the deoxidation, which is basically just stripping any oxides that are there, so that we can start over with a very uniform oxide layer. And once we go into this tank, which is a weak solution of sulfuric acid, okay. um, and the sulfuric acid is essentially the same thing as battery acid. Now in this tank, we're actually using um, air aeration because this is an oxidation process, so we need oxygen. Getting air into that solution is a good thing. Uh, we've also got these two electrodes. Um, these are, I believe, the cathodes. I never can remember this. Uh, yeah. Cathodes or anodes. Anyway, this is the negative side of the uh, of the system. So this gets hooked up to the negative power supply. The red wire would be hooked up to the actual parts. So we actually have a whole rack assembly that connects all these parts, and then this goes in there, and we apply um, a set current to the parts and maintain that by adjusting this dial yep. manually. And that's another part that we really could improve this process with. But that's it. Uh, this bath we actually try to keep as cold as possible. Uh, oh. And if we find out that when we're anodizing bigger batches, it's getting too hot, we're gonna have to add a chilling system to it. Gotcha. So it's, yeah, that's very important to keep. What's the, what's the temperature do you like to run it at? Uh, ideally, we'd like to run at 20 Celsius, but okay. As you can see, we're already up to 22, and as we start to put the parts and the chemical it reaction starts to go, it, it actually increases the temperature. Yeah. And then this is the dye. Correct. This is the dye. This is the one you don't want to spill on yourself. <laughs> and <clears throat> although it shouldn't be done this way, I am doing it this way. We have a second aeration uh, going on in the dye right now, and that's not correct but I wanted something to circulate it and I didn't want to have um, like a mechanical impeller. Yeah. So when I'm actually using the dye, we shut that off so it's not all full of bubbles yeah, this and is stuff. Just to this keep is just it, to keep it moving, yeah. keep it, the heat um, set correctly. Cause this one needs to come up to 50 Celsius. Okay. And what I was finding is without circulation, the heat was just kind of staying localized right at the heater. It wasn't getting the whole, gotcha. the that whole thing. Sense. So yeah, a couple of minutes in here. Um, oh, we should mention the, 
there's a bunch of formulas and stuff that you need to use to figure out how long and how much current, how much voltage and stuff. And it's called the 720 rule. If you Google 720 rule anodize, you can find everything you want to know. Google man. Yeah, Google man. The last step is, is the rump roast. <laughs> that's right. This is where we've got our pot roast going because lunch is coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, this whole process, you know, right. makes you very, whoa. Look now, at these balls. <laughs> these balls are here just to try to keep some heat in. When we're actually anodizing, the cover doesn't fit on this very well. And this bath needs to be closer to 100 Celsius or oh, wow. 200 uh, Fahrenheit, yeah. just, just under a boil. And this is a sealant. So once we get the honeycomb oxide layer built up in the, in the sulfuric acid, then we get the dye, which penetrates into all those honeycombs. Last, it goes into this sealant, which seals the whole thing and kind of caps it all off. How long does it sit in here for? Uh, this one's like 15 minutes. Okay. And what are these made out of? That's I don't know. Plastic. That's all what right. they're made out of. <laughs> Trapping heat. It's yep. like the ozone layer, guys. And obviously, because we need this one to actually be hot, we've got it sitting on a hot plate. And uh, yeah, everything seems to work pretty slick. Yeah, that I gotta say, I don't have to say, but I'm going to say <laughs> that that black came out really, really, really well. I was really impressed. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised how well this just kind of worked. Yeah. And I think it's also worth mentioning that our whole setup and all of our chemistry is based on the Caswell system. Uh, I know we use Caswell in all of our gas tank sealant mm -hmm. and that type of stuff. Uh, they also do a bunch of things with plating and anodizing and I have to admit, their process and following along with a little additional research, everything came out great. So oh, yeah. Recommended. Hell yeah, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah. Well, we're going to anodize Alan's car next. That's right. Anything that fits in the bucket, we can I'm, make it purple I'm or of pink mauve. or anything. Mauve dye. Cool. Thanks, Steph. That's how I yeah. spent my 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> I was here, too. Uh, well, go have fun taking care of your robots. Yeah, I gotta go check on that thing. We'll talk to you in a sec. Jeff Barry. Hi. What you got there? Hubcaps. Those are awesome. Thanks. It's a cool car. Uh, yeah. You guys want to? You guys want to hear about this red R69s? I know nothing like as far as being super nerdy. Nothing's gonna top what we just did for today. So let's bring it down a little bit and talk about a motorcycle. Um, we'll talk about this 1969 R69S. Um, we've talked about some Slash 2s and some R69s before uh, on the Revival Daily. I've talked to Alan about it. It's actually one of my favorite. The Slash 2s are like one of my favorite bikes of all time. But this bike in particular is a pretty special bike. We restored this thing two and a half years ago or something. So the story is, uh, this is actually Roger Clemens bike. I don't know if you guys pay attention to baseball, even if you don't, because I really don't, but I know who Roger Clemens is. He's, you know, he's one of the most famous baseball players of all time. Um, anyways, this is his, and the story is that this was his father's bike, and his father used to take him to baseball games when he was a kid on it. And uh, it's been in the family forever. Uh, it's sat for a long time. It was restored at some point in its lifetime, I think it was like the 80s or something like that. I could be wrong, but I think that's when it is. Uh, Chase, you might be able to correct me on this um, if you're watching. Anyways, so it was restored back in the day and then it, just like anything else, sat for a very, very, very long time. So he brought it to us to basically give it more of, a, of an, another facelift, another restoration, if you will. Um, we actually, the paint on the frame was good. It was still, it still looked great, but the, but the fenders and the tail light and the tank and the headlight bucket and everything, they had faded a little bit and there were also some like, some pinstriping on it. So, and obviously the engine was, was pretty filthy and it hadn't run in a long time. So we just kind of sorted through everything, had, had a lot of stuff repainted, got it running, got it reliable. And uh, that's where it's at now. Uh, he came by and rode it. He's a really, He's a really, really big guy, so it was it was kind of, you know, his memory of riding it, being on it as a kid, and, and you know, he can't go too up on this thing. I mean, he's a huge dude. Um, and I'm talking like, like he's just, I mean, he's Roger Clemens is a giant. Hey, Ted. <laughs> Anyways, and so now his nephew, which is a friend of the shops as well, he rides it all the time, and this thing is like one of his daily riders, and it's pretty bitchin'. Yeah, cool bike. Anyway, it's back here for some, I mean, it, we, we do maintenance on it since we restored it, so that's why it's here.
Let's go talk to somebody else. Let's go this way. Let's go sneak up on somebody. We should start scaring people. Who do I want to scare? Annie's already scary, so I don't know. It feels really good right here. Let's go find Ted. Actually, I don't want to scare Ted because it sounds like he's working with some, pr some power tools. Look, there's Bates. That dog is so, so scared. Ted! There he is. The man, the myth. What is up, my friend? What you man? What you doing over here, man? Chopping wood? Cutting things. Ooh, check it out. Boom. This is why we call him Ted. Now, his name is Chris Arbach. He goes by Arbach. He goes by Ted. Teddy Money. T Money. Ed T Money. Edwin Money. Edwin Money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's got a man of many names. Now, we have a bunch of Chris's that work here. I think we may have talked about this. Well, yeah. Chris, Chris, Chris. Since Chris Davis was the first ever Chris in the world. Ever. Yeah. Every other Chris who gets comes in is gets a nickname. Um, we, we called him Arbok for a while, and then one day he was wearing those. Where did you find those? They were just hanging up. We don't know who Ted is. Yeah, and so he was wearing up. them, and this, uh, this guy, Sam, that used to work here goes, Ted! And he started calling, and then we just started calling him Ted. And that's yeah. where the name Ted comes from. Well, that's not the actual... That's not where it actually came from, but no, that's, that's where the he, origin. <laughs> the origin of the name Ted came from some uh, some, some ear protection. Whatever. Hey, what are you doing, Ted? Uh, this is one of the steps in our switch housing uh, development. So come around. Can you see me? I mean, can you see that? Can you see me? Is what I'm worried <laughs> that's about. That's all that matters. Uh, check it out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is uh, the first stop of machining to machine our switch housing so that it does a little pocket, drill and thread, which we talked about our thread mill uh, one time before. And then uh, we do it in bar stock and then I come in here and cut it. I have an op that does a little saw mark so I don't have to measure or do anything and just chop them up, put Man. them in the box. Look at all these things. So this is our first run of about 60 sets. And these all go on one bike, right? All on one bike. Cool. Like a Buzzer Zuko. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, those are two button, three button. So they'll go back on the machine, get finished out. And then I think you guys saw the anodizing. Yeah, we just uh, we just went over the whole anode process, which is really cool. Yeah. Dude, awesome. So how long is it going to take you to cut all these things? We're almost done. Yeah, it's this is probably the slowest op just because we haven't invested in like a CNC bandsaw or yeah. auto loading or anything, so it's just me cutting them. But it's the very beginning stages of production yeah. for us. Yeah. Like I was telling them that the whole anodizing thing was an experiment. So because Stefan was kind of talking about how the table might be like viewed as ghetto, even though it's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's kind of the same, I guess, with like product development, right? I mean, it's not like an experiment, but you know, we're in the very very beginning stages of like actually making right, like yeah. production runs. So. It's definitely like you gotta crawl before you walk, walk before you run. You spend a whole lot of time and investment into some fancy saw and then uh, you know spend all this time working it out and then want to change something. Yep. And maybe we don't even end up uh, using these. We change the design or something. So. Yeah man. I don't know. They look amazing. Thanks. You designed it so I'm sure it's I'll the best. I'll sell a good price for you. Thanks man. The Alex price. Friend discount. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, uh, thanks, Ted. No problem. Chris Arbach, thanks for talking. Sorry to bother Bye, you, I know you're so busy. Yeah. Wear your safety goggles and your ear goggles. Ted phones. Your toe. Cool. Did you just come up with that? No. Was it Doc? Uh, it was probably Doc. Man, that's good. He's good with the Ted phones. So am I, man. Ty's not here today. Ty's uh, taking a little vacation, I think, or I think he went camping. Ty likes to camp. He and his wife camp a lot. They have they he built like this big conversion van. You should we should show it sometime. It's really cool. Um, and they go camping with their dogs. That sounds terrible to me, but some people really like camping. Uh, anyways, I think we've had a long one today. We'll wrap it up. Ooh, look at Andy's new seat. Check this out. Bike still gross. Seat looks good though. I'm just kidding. I like Andy's bike a lot. It's awesome. What's going on up there? Can you hear that? Like roller skating. Uh, cool. Thanks for watching again. If you did, if you didn't, then you won't know. So who gives? Cool. Um, Rival Daily. Like, subscribe, comment, comic, condoms, uh, comment. 
anything you want to know, anything you want to see, anything you want, don't want to see. If you don't want to see me, you don't want to see, what was that noise? There's a bunch of weird cool. shit going on right now. Thanks for watching again, guys. It's Friday. What are you guys going to do this weekend? Comment what you're going to do this weekend. Maybe it'll give us some ideas to, to do because we don't really do much and we're pretty boring. So let me know what I, let me know what we should do this weekend. Yeah. How about that? All right. Thank you. Have a good day, weekend, night. Mm, high five.